Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now this video will be all about the channel updates and whilst I'm doing channel updates I'm going to unbox something that I bought on the Dutch eBay. But yeah, so let's get started. Uh, at the top over here you can see a PCB and this is the PCB of the windmill. I finally came together and soldered it. It was quite a job to do. I made a little botch here and there. But it, yeah, it's together and as you might expect from a PCB like this, it's not really working as expected. It is working, but there is a short somewhere or it, it burned down somewhere. Not sure one of the MOSFETs is arcing over whilst on the board. So the charger was working, it was charging at well, the designed uh, output spec, but it failed. So I did a redesign of the board and I will show you that redesign right now. So this is the schematic of my newly designed board. I removed a lot of components, but there are a few that have stayed. Uh, one of which is the 5 volt regulator. Now this, yeah, this has stayed. It's the same, same layout, same components. So the battery management system or BMS for short uh, did change a lot. I'm now using a IC that's actually meant for managing batteries and charging them. And that IC also provides me with the, the voltage and the current readings. The, the IC also allows you to set them. So you can limit the current um, with I2C uh, commands and read the thing out. Very fancy, but then I needed to remove the two uh, ADCs that were uh, managing the current and the voltage reading because this thing does it for me. Uh, there's also temperature uh, protection uh, for charger so that when the temperature goes too high the charger stops. Uh, the temperature did stay so this is the internal temperature not the battery temperature but the internal temperature. Um, yeah out let's the rectifier oh yeah this changed a lot based on a recent video of SDG uh, about rectifiers I um, opted to choose uh, a new type of rectifiers I just had diodes in a full bridge rectifier configuration uh, and based on his testing I will link the video down below uh, those maintain an, maintained an efficiency of around, I thought it was around 85 or 90 percent. Could be way off here, but let's uh, take 90 percent. And the combination with the MOSFET driver uh, as a full bridge rectifier, this chip um, manages to get to uh, manages to get efficiency levels of around. 98% if I recall correctly so yeah that's the whole thing of a windmill generate energy so you want the rectifier efficiency to be as high as possible so I chose this it, yeah the, the bomb is a little bit bigger but it, yeah higher efficiency uh, this all stayed the same LM35 temperature sensor, programming port, uh, pull ups for the, uh, for the um, Hall effect sensors on the motor, on the BLDC. Still using the Atmega 328P, uh, so yeah, that's about it. The schematic has uh, uh, shrunk a lot. Oh yeah, and the brake, I uh, also fixed the brake, uh, the footprints weren't good or something. I redid the transistor, no, the MOSFET uh, selection because um, I don't think it was working on the board I designed previously. 
I'm having a lot of well challenges with those MOSFET things because you know I'm not really um, I'm I'm doing this myself. I didn't follow any lessons on MOSFETs. Yeah, how to use them as a switch, and that's what I'm basically trying to do. But you know. So we'll have to figure out if this is working and if this isn't working then there's probably uh, another revision of this uh, PCB coming in very shortly. So if we take a look at the schematic or the uh, layout, sorry. There I'm going to open the 3D viewer. This is the rectifier circuitry. It's basically taking up the same uh, space as the diode configuration would. And there are now also some parts at the bottom, diodes and capacitors, resistors, all that stuff. And the other um, DC to DC converter has been removed, as I said. And that cleaned up the board big time, because uh, a lot of MOSFETs and other things were needed in order to implement it. And this BMS now um, does everything, charges the uh, battery manages the uh, current, manages the voltage and has the MOSFETs presumably built into them which is uh, quite nice uh, so again the MOSFET for the braking system uh, I'm not really sure I... oh yeah over here here are the brakes so they'll go... this is one brake um, those aren't the actual resistors needed and during braking there are some other resistors uh, that will fit uh, the footprint because it's a resistor with three leads and not two so I placed those like this so it will match so as I said uh, all the other ADCs went away oh I still need to remove the labels um, the old ADCs. Let's rotate it this way. So the Atmega 328P uh, with the uh, crystal, some capacitors for decoupling, all that stuff. I think I'll move those closer to the chip, but that's uh, another thing that I need to do. And as I said, the 5 volt uh, DC to DC regulator is still there that converts the input or the output of the rectifier into a usable system voltage that we can use to power everything else I am not sure Ooh. if the no the BMS is directly powered from the uh, rectifier's output I wasn't sure about that but that's uh, so uh, there will be virtually no load on this uh, thing if everything goes uh, according to plan because I did have some issues with the moment I connected this connector it wouldn't uh, maintain the voltage there was a, a big current being drawn so still need to figure out why that is but yeah it's strange because it basically just works when I do it on a breadboard and when I connect it to this PCB it doesn't work anymore so Moore's law I presume uh, this is the input of the uh, three phase uh, motor and yeah just basic I2C test points so that's it for the, the, the revision change of the PCB I hope that you are still with me on this project I can imagine if you're not, but <laughs> I do hope that you're still with me and I'm really keen on uh, ordering this and getting this to work. I'm hoping that I'll do it uh, a little bit quicker than I did it last time. But there's still the issue with a chip shortage in the world and the other project that I'm currently uh, busy working on uh, also have some issues due to the chip shortage in the world. So. I'll keep you guys updated. So, I will order those components uh, when I get the chance to. The project will be on a halt uh, again. So, 
I will keep you guys updated. So I did post a message or a what's called a story on uh, Instagram about the windmill. Uh, but yeah, it, for now this project has been suspended again. Now let's go to this one. And before we go to this package, I actually got a new knife set. It's made out of metal. If I can open it. There you go. It's made out of metal. It has a rubber thingy and you need to unscrew it like this. And then you can pick a knife. Do it like this. That's the wrong one, but we'll use this to lift it out like so. There you go. Oh, they're still a little bit uh, lubricated. Well, you can pick a knife, then you can insert it. I actually do need to unscrew that part where you insert the knife, like so. And now, now the knife is in place. Now it feels really nice. It has a lot of weight and I think therefore a lot of precision. So I suggest that we give it a try. Where can we open this box? Uh, I think over here. The knife is well, rather sharp. That is good. It slices through this without any problems. Oh. If I can keep my path. There we go. So now this should open up. Oh, it's in another package. A package is in a package. How nice. Don't need that. Now we can test it out even further or is can we just no it won't it won't go down oh well ah it's really really a, a very good knife For the, the Dutch, local Dutchies, you can buy this at the Action. I think it was around 1 euros. I uh, got it as a gift from someone, so I'm not sure how expensive it was. So, there we go. Little recycled packaging. Even more to be opened. I think that this should be the last box before we actually find out what's in here. And I'm very excited about it. Wires? Wires? What are those? Wires? Wires? It's a wall plug from a Nokia. Wow, it's really heavy. And it's German. Cool. Heavy and German. IP20. Didn't know that IP ratings were a thing when this one existed. So I think I might have already spoiled it. Damn. It's way bigger than I thought it would be. I bought myself a Nokia. And it's in very good, very good shape, very good condition. It's really big. It's freaking massive. How can I remove the battery? Oh, slide it. Damn. It's really big. Oh, this is one of those cards that you slide in. Wow. This is 
Hey. Made of metal. Wow, this is really a sturdy phone, man. Damn. Made in Germany. Cool. Now, I think that this might be one of the things that I'm looking for. What is the thing that I'm looking for? Well, to tell you a little bit about about why I was not really uploading any videos. A lot of uh, did change in my life. Recently I got a job and I needed to go to the job. And for that I bought a car, an old Mercedes. And it needed some work, but it needed a little bit more work than I had anticipated. And I did need the car to be safe and drive so yeah that was uh, what I was uh, busy with and now I've got some free time and I'm going to do some projects and one of them being a Bluetooth tape adapter so I'm doubting if I should make it advanced or not but for the moment I'm doubting between a simple version that just outputs audio or a more advanced version that uses an ESP32 that you can kind of customize but yeah I was thinking about using rotary encoders to see if the tape has stopped or so it would auto pause and all that stuff and not sure yet the other thing is I want to make a Nokia emulator that emulates a Nokia phone so you can connect to an ESP via Bluetooth and the car thinks that there is a Nokia phone attached to it now I'm kind of waiting on some of the components to be available before I can order that project because I'm in the, the, the stage that I actually need to have the hardware to test everything out but I was also like yeah but I'm actually talking to a black box because I don't know if I'm sending the correct things until I get a response which will only happen when I'm sending the correct things so I looked up on the internet and on eBay these phones working uh, were up for sale uh, starting at around 100 euros I bought this for 26 euros and it's working so the reason that this phone is this phone is this little port oh yes this is the port that my uh, car uses to interface with the phone and it's this port is available in the Nokia 3110 not the 3310 which is a more common mobile phone so it was a little bit of a, a challenge to find uh, this phone but yeah it, it worked out 26 euros for a phone that is in well actually excellent condition that's really impressive I mean it really honestly it really looks good it actually really looks good no signs of use so I'll be very careful with this thing so supposedly it should work so let's turn it on there we go yeah, it's in Dutch, so it says powering on, battery is charging, but this phone won't work because it uh, uses an older GSM standard, I think GSM 2, and we're probably around GSM 4 or 5, not really sure, but it's not the, it's not the same as the 4G uh, mobile data network, that's something else. That's uh oh it does take a while for this thing to boot up actually. 
but this feels really sturdy. It's big, man. I mean, it's the size of my hand. I was expecting it to be something like this, the size of the, size of the sides of the keyboard. But man, it is big. So let me catch a thumbnail real quick. So nothing happens, which is a bit of a shame. And if I turn it off using the button and turn it back on again. But it seems to be having a rough time booting up and I'm not sure if that's due to the network that's unable to be found or if it's due to something else. So well, yeah, I'll uh, let this sit for now and I'm hoping that eventually it will turn on. So again, I'll keep you guys updated on the phone and I'll also keep you guys updated on the channel. There will be a project video for the Bluetooth tape for sure. I don't think there will be a project video for the Nokia phone emulator since I'll be possibly selling it to car enthusiasts so obviously I won't make a video well maybe I will make a video about how to use it but for now no uh, programming videos or anything so please let me know down below if I should stick with a rotary encoder to see if the tape has passed playing or if I should stick with the easy method being just a Bluetooth receiver and put it straight and put its output uh, and connect its output to the uh, magnetic head. Just let me know down below. And I'm hoping to do those projects in the coming uh, weeks, months. I'll just uh, keep you guys updated. So, thanks for watching this well little unbox and uh, channel update video. I hope that you find it interesting. I hope that you know that I haven't forgotten you all. I'm at 670 subscribers and I'm really thankful for that. I didn't even thought it was possible to reach that amount of numbers with the videos that I make but yeah I just did it and it's freaking awesome. So thank you guys. I hope to see you guys in the next videos. Bye. Oh hey hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well if you want you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.